Do you believe in the supernatural? Does a Sasquatch roam the forests and lakes of Ontario? Can such a mythical creature survive some of Canada's harsh winters and possibly still be living among us? My name is Mr. Mystery, and I am on the case. I am a part of a secret government agency that exposes urban legends that haunt Ontario's small towns. Join me on my mission to uncover the truth. Welcome to Mr. Mystery Tells Some History. Here in my safe room, I can reveal some of Ontario's best kept secrets. The strange and unusual history of the small towns across this province. In this episode, I will be exploring the mystery of Bigfoot in Richmond Hill, Ontario. So, let's travel down the rabbit hole as I uncover a portal to another dimension. But first, here's some history. Richmond Hill is a small town and is home to many different tourist locations, one of which is called Bond Lake. Bond Lake is home to many tourists. Opening up in the early 1900s, this was a hotspot for tourists, for fishing, escaping for meditation, and even some weddings. But does it share its great views and beautiful landscapes with something supernatural or even something not from this world? The history of Bigfoot stretches back thousands of years, but has only surfaced in Ontario in the past few centuries. Read from an article called Beyond the Campfire, in this article, written by park naturalist Roger Lafontaine, a classically trained biologist and amateur Sasquatch researcher, do unknown species make their home in Ontario's wilderness? Ontario is still a pretty wild place since the 1800s. These protected areas offer opportunities to preserve habitats in the case for Sasquatch, also known as Bigfoot. The Sasquatch is described as a large, hairy ape that stands over 10 feet tall with superhuman strength. Sightings do occur in Ontario, however, Few of us have seen the real thing. Researchers believe that Sasquatch is a relic species of giant ape with long arms, hunched shoulders, no neck, and sloped head. Some campers at Bond Lake have reported sightings mostly as fleeting glimpses of giant apes running across the trail. Occasionally, strange noises are heard around the campfire. There are other signs left by the Sasquatch, include carefully made piles of sticks, scratches on trees, and of course, enormous human-like footprints that are in the mud or snow. So I had to explore this for myself. So I went exploring the beautiful outlooks of this majestic lake with the constant feeling of being watched, but I brushed it off because there were people at different sections of the path at first, I thought it was all man-made, but knowing a little bit about Bigfoot, I found the way these trees fell down seemed a bit odd. Seeing as how all or most of the roots are still attached at the bottom of the tree, 
all the trees have fallen in such a weird manner that it kind of looks intentional and creates a path. The two largest trees were pushed and placed in such a way to make it look like there was an entrance to a different part of the forest. Battling the mosquitoes, I ventured forward to find a small path that led me up a hill. Going up, I wasn't sure what to expect, but then I saw more strange trees that have fallen over in such a way that it seems forced and man-made. And they created a weird design on the ground. This design kind of reminded me of a foundation to a house. Could this have been the foundation to someone or something's shelter? I ventured forward a little bit more and went to the very top of the hill. And at the top, there was a small campground. In this campground, there was a fire pit, but the strange part is the markings on the tree that kind of looked like claw marks. The way in which this tree was scratched was beyond bizarre. Would somebody just use a knife to scratch the tree and make these marks that kind of look like the claw print of a giant hand? It could just be man-made, but it is still very strange. Going further into the path, you come across a pile of sticks stacked in such a manner that creates a wall and the strange part about that is that Sasquatch is known to be stacking wood in such a way to create shelter. The strangest part is that just five feet away from this wall, there are more trees pushed over and cracked completely in half. I find it hard to believe that the wind could push a tree over this dense. Yes, I understand that maybe somebody could have done this, but you gotta ask yourself, why would somebody do this? None of the wood was used towards a fire or shelter, so they were just left behind for no reason. And I continued around the lake to find more evidence, finding stranger and stranger things that seemed out of place. If you go further down the path, you will come across a bridge made from loose logs and branches. Maybe it's natural. Maybe this used to be a river and naturally all the branches and sticks have collected at the bottom to create this bridge. Coming close to the end of the path, you come across this giant opening, which I call the courtyard. I believe that many Sasquatch and Indians had meetings and could have possibly held aliens. The deeper I go, the stranger it gets. There's so many mysteries in this park that I can't just do it all in one day. Little is to know of what type of things went on at Bond Lake, but there is still much more to learn, and I am here to try and uncover the truth about Bigfoot. So, next time you head out on a camping or hiking trip, just remember, you might be sharing the landscape with Sasquatch. And don't be afraid, because like you, Sasquatch is out there to get away from it all. So, if you get the feeling like you're being watched, check that you're exploring the park responsibly and give thumbs up towards the tree lights. My quest is not over to discover the truth 
and strange things that happen in the small towns across this province. A lot more questions to be answered in the future. I will be continue searching the strange and unusual history of this town and other. My name is Mr. Mystery, and my quest is not over to find the truth.